Hello. So to finish this MOOC on medical device manufacturing, I'm going to just tie up a few loose ends by talking about two other typical medical devices that are manufactured. And we'll have a look at their uses, their component parts, and uh, how they're manufactured, just to kind of maybe complete the course and give it an idea of the life cycle of a medical device. So we've discussed some of these already in the course. We looked at stents and joint implants. Uh, we looked at catheters, um, hernia repair, and uh, I'm going to finish up by looking at pacemakers and heart valves. And this diagram just gives a flavour of the different types of medical devices that have been discussed in the course to date. So I'm going to start talking about heart valves. Uh, prosthetic heart valves are um, a type of heart valve that can be mechanical or it can be tissue based and it's used to replace the natural valve in the heart that is no longer functioning correctly. So over here uh, we have this lovely video that was open source. Um, it's a pig heart valve that is uh, in a laboratory setting. Uh, which you can see it's a tricuspid valve. You can see the three leaflets opening and closing there as blood flows through the valves. Um, so there are three different types of heart valves. There's the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, and the aortic or the pulmonic, four different types of valves, excuse me. Um, they were first used in the 1960s and there was a dramatic improvement observed after valve replacement. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. The heart has four chambers, as we know, so two are pumping chambers and two are um, return chambers. Um, and there's two valves on either side uh, of those, so four non-return valves. Uh, so basically, as so this is the aortic valve, so um, blood is pumped uh, into the aorta and around the body. The blood cannot flow back. Um, Likewise, when, when blood comes back into the pulmonary uh, vein, uh, it cannot flow backwards. So these valves are non-return valves. Um, we have an aortic valve, a pulmonary valve, a bicuspid, or what's known as the mitral valve, which only has two leaflets, and a tricuspid valve, which has three leaflets. So the right side of the heart pumps through the lungs, this is the pulmonary circulation, and the left side pumps through the entire body which is the systemic circulation. So the left side of the heart is, is working hard. It's pumping a lot of blood and it's pumping against the system. Um, so over time, these valves can, can loosen. They can, or not loosen, but they, they, they can get stressed. They can get damaged. Um, and especially in the left side. So what can happen is uh, blood will start to regurgitate or backflow if the valve doesn't close tightly enough. So these valves might weaken over time, they stop closing tightly and blood will start to regurgitate. The blood will leak back into the chambers rather than flowing forward. Prolapse is when the valves of the valve flop or bulge back into an upper heart chamber during a heartbeat. And prolapse mainly affects the mitral valve on the right side. As stenosis occurs if the flaps of a valve thicken, stiffen, or fuse together, so stenosis, it thickens, it prevents the heart valve from fully opening. So as a result, not enough blood flows through the valve, and in some cases, um, valves can have stenosis and backflow problems. And atresia occurs if a heart valve lacks an opening for blood to pass through. So all of these lead to heart valve failure, um, some more serious than others, and may necessitate valve replacement. So an artificial valve uh, is used for replacing the damaged or diseased valve. The natural valve is excised and replacements then are implant. Um, so they're usually grouped into either tissue valves or mechanical. And there's an example of a tissue valve here. Uh, they are usually um, porcine or bovine in nature. And uh, they can be homographs, which means they are um, using the patient's own cells and tissue or xenografts from another animal source. Most typically, they would be uh, xenografts, as I said, porcine or bovine. Mechanical valves, then, uh, there, there's different types. So caged ball uh, were one of the, the first type of mechanical valves. 
uh, tilting disc by leaflet, and more recently stented valves have joined uh, this list. So here's a, a more complete list. So um, the first uh, valve would have been the Ball and Cage Edward Starr uh, valve, which was in the 70s. Uh, so in this instance here, um, the, the ball stops blood flowing. When there's enough back pressure, the ball lifts and blood flows through, and then the ball drops back down again. And as I mentioned, this had a dramatic effect on improving outcome of patients um, and was very successful. But as with all things, improvements were made. So the tilting disc was the next design um, in the late 70s. And these saloon doors, as they're called again in the 70s. Um, so the tilting disc works on the basis of enough back pressure of blood. The disc opened, let blood flow, flow in, and the same with the saloon doors. Uh, with the saloon doors really um, being superior and having lost a lot less failure, these saloon doors here. Um, pig valves were being used from uh, the 60s and the method of um, manufacturing them and, and surgically implanting them has improved somewhat. Um, and then there was cow-based valves from the 80s. Um, and in 2007 then um, this collapsible valve uh, uh, came on stream uh, which has just been um, FDA approved and is, is becoming more and more uh, commonplace. So a collapsible stented valve, which I'll talk about in more detail in a moment. So the main materials used in these valves, so the original uh, ball and cage used a silicon elastomer ball um, and the cage part would have been a, a titanium cage or sometimes cobalt chrome alloy um, structure and then there was a polytetrafluoroethylene, which is known as a trade name Teflon or Dacron, um, woven uh, coating around it, which allowed um, the cage to be integrated into the patient's uh, tissue. So uh, more recently, these bileaflet valves um, in the mechanical setting are the most popular. Um, again, the, the frame here that I've just put the arrow on would be a titanium frame. It's covered in a woven um, mesh-like structure, so polytetrafluoroethylene or Dacron, which is um, sewn into the patient's uh, tissue and forms a, a quite a nice tight bond with the patient's tissue. Um, usually this is, as the name Teflon suggests, uh, this, this woven fabric here is it's non-stick, so um, it's minimal blood clotting. Um, this section here then would be um, pyrolytic carbon, and the leaflets are, um, they could be graphite coated with pyrolytic carbon. Uh, so they are the different types of materials. Pyrolytic carbon used, as, as we spoke about in an early section of the course, as a very, very low thrombogenic capability. So um, there is, um, very little opportunity for blood clotting to happen. The technology behind the use of heart valves is evolving continuously. So at the same time, two to five percent of applications give rise to thromboembolism. Uh, so here's just a schematic uh, over here of a heart valve being implanted, um, So which is quite nice. So it'll give you an idea of why this uh, Teflon or Dacron sleeve is needed. So the surgeon is, is physically stitching uh, the fabric into the patient's uh, heart tissue at the site of implantation, and then you see it in situ here. So with these mechanical heart valves, anticoagulant treatment is required, uh, which significantly increases the risk of internal bleeding. So that would be one of the drawbacks to them. So tissue heart valves then are the other type. They're not used as often as mechanical heart valves. Um, the complexity of the surgery, it, it's more complex. There's limited commercial availability of graft material so from, from animal sources. It's sometimes difficult to obtain the correct size of material and compatibility and rejection can often be a feature of this type of operation. Um, they also have higher calcification rates where um, ca calcium deposits build on the 
valve and it causes um, stenosis, so blocking, um, it, it stops the valves opening and it may cause blood regurgitation, blood clotting and failure. So the main advantage is they're far less prone to thromboembolic problems, so formation of blood clots, and they don't require the same level of anticoagulant solutions. So uh, would be more favorable for some types of patients. They're used in combination with polyethylene theraphthalic cloth or polypropylene struts. Uh, so here is an example. So um, this is the cuff. Uh, which might be a titanium or polypropylene strut um, coated in um, PTFE um, or polyethylene terephthalic cloths. Uh, so this is the valve itself and usually these valves are hand sewn into the cuffs to make one complete unit and uh, there really isn't any other way to do it it's hand sewn there, ex there are experts in sewing heart valves and down here i have a picture of this new stented valve um, which is a uh, collapsible titanium stent again there's a, there's a woven section here which should allow tissue ingrowth and the um, it's a biological heart valve itself. So these are inserted, this dent is collapsed, it's inserted on a balloon through the femoral artery and up into the heart uh, uh, area wherever the valve is being replaced. It's a relatively new technology, um, has seen good success so far. So it's minimally invasive, the surgery, and um, it's a uh, previous heart replacement surgery, heart valve replacement surgery would have been open surgery, so it offers a huge advantage. The stent should keep the heart valve in place and tissue should integrate uh, with this cuff and keep it in place long term. So failure modes are um, infection, might be due to surgical technique, thrombosis as I mentioned, Anemia, where the red blood cells get damaged from hitting off the metal uh, valve and um, patients can suffer anemia or calcification with calcium deposits um, deposit on the heart valve. So um, how to manufacture them? Um, so the plastic part can be molded and extruded. Metal machining or casting for the discs. They would then need to be polished. Uh, surface coatings like pyrolytic carbon deposited on using plasma spray, chemical method deposition, which we talked about. And anodization and passivation would be very important to prevent corrosion. The uh, porcine graft material then is physically sewed, which I just said. Um, the component parts then would need to be sterilized um, in mechanical valves using either uh, ethylene oxide or e-beam or gamma ray um, for the porcine grafts and uh, there might be other methods of um, steam sterilization and then final inspection packaging and labeling so who makes them uh, well the I suppose I've a, a pretty good list here of who makes them um, so Axelin, some of the big players, Edwards, um, Genoval, uh, Medtronic, um, St. Jude Medical would be some of the big names in heart valves um, and there are others there also. Um, so I would direct you to uh, YouTube videos on the stented uh, heart valve replacement um, to see how that technology works. Uh, it is very interesting. Okay, thank you.